Hello, I'm Atuba George, and we've been talking all week about how to conduct yourself in the house of God. Now, we, we're, talking about, we're talking about when, when someone desires to be a pastor, see, and he, over here, First Timothy chapter 3, he used the word bishop, and I explained to you that bishop here doesn't mean like the bishop we know now to wear long cap and see someone has got no 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 he's talking about someone who wants to be an overseer an overseer is the same thing as a pastor see he wants to stay back and watch over god's people are you getting what i'm saying so he says when he desires to do that that is something that has to do with a man's desire see so when a man desires to do that then he says it's a good thing that he's desired to be but then he gives the quality because you don't put anyone to watch over God's people. If not, he will mess them up. And that's what's going on um, to a great, you know, in lots of places. You just appoint people, they, they become pastors, and before you know what's happening, they've defrauded brethren, they, they've done a lot of harm to the brethren. See, God is not happy with that. And the truth is, if, if the scriptures didn't speak about these things, then we'll say, okay, we're in the dark concerning them. But the scriptures clearly spoke about these things. Now, if we are not following what the scriptures have said, then it means we're encouraging the darkness. You understand what I'm saying? We're encouraging the darkness. So he says, first of all, he, this person must be blameless. So before you anoint or appoint anyone to become a pastor, he's got to be blameless. The Amplified Version says, he must give no ground for accusation, must, but must be above reproach. See? So it's someone you've studied for a while. And then you, you look at this guy and you're like, you know what? You know, like people say, you know, today, like, look, uh, a, a pastor is a man. So uh, he, he doesn't matter what he does. Remember that he is a man. Yes, but you see, to, to become a pastor, it's not, <laughs> it's not just something... Listen, to, you know, when God calls you, he calls you to serve him. He calls you to obey him. So it doesn't matter your weakness. Understand what I'm talking about? It doesn't matter your weakness. The God who calls you, the more you follow him and learn of him, every weakness in you will go. So naturally, when you're working with God, there will be a renewal taking place in your life. So certain things that were habits before that definitely will leave naturally because you're following the Lord. Now, but when you say, I want to become a pastor, it's not children that become pastors. It is mature believers that are left to become pastors. In other words, it is people who have walked with the Lord over time, have understood the ways of the Lord, that can now decide, you know what, I want to stay back and be a pastor. And then the believers are supposed to look out for these qualities before they said, okay, fine, you, you can remain and, and, and pastor the church. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that's what he said here. See, so now, watch this. this he must be the husband of one wife, circumspect, one who's on purpose, not a joker. Not one who's trying, you know, you know it's, it's amazing. Not the one who's trying to, still trying to decide whether to be a pastor or whether to be a businessman. You, you understand what I'm talking about? So um, he said, okay, um, I want to be a pastor, but I cannot leave my business. And before you know what's happening, he's trying to get everybody in his church to sell his product, everybody in his church to be, uh, to, to be part of the business that he's doing. That's wrong. See, he, he's not matured enough. Watch this, he says, he must be circumspect, temperate, and self-controlled. He must be sensible and well-behaved and dignified and lead an orderly, disciplined life. He must be hospitable, showing love for and being a friend to believers, especially strangers or foreigners, and be, and be a capable and qualified teacher. A pastor is a teacher. Naturally, a pastor must be a teacher. See, because he, he's going to be watching over this flock. He's going to be watching over these people. And then these people are going to be looking out or looking up to him to learn a lot. So his life must teach. 
A pastor is the one who will tell, he, who will tell you, why are you drinking tea this morning? And he can give you one hour teaching from the word of God why he's drinking tea in the morning. I'm telling the truth. Why are you wearing that shirt? I notice you love wearing this kind of shirt. And he will tell you teachings from the word of God. That's who a pastor is. Everything about him is teaching. Now that means a pastor doesn't have a dark side. Because what's that dark side going to teach? He cannot have a dark side. So when the Bible says a pastor should be, should be apt to teach, it means that, look, everything about him, he is ready, not just explain, no, teach. He is ready to teach you everything, everything. I, I saw you, I noticed you came back late last night. Oh, you know, this is what the word of the Lord said, or this is what the word of the Lord taught me. He is ready to teach. So his life, his whole life is shining. His whole life is beaming with light. That's who a pastor is supposed to be. It's a higher calling. Now that's why the Bible says anyone who desires this office receives double honor. Double honor. Why? Because it's a great calling. We'll continue tomorrow. Praise God. But I pray that your eyes of understanding be enlightened. And that you will understand what God is doing in this season and in this time. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.